Thank you so much for inviting me to the Bucharest Summit. It takes place at such a challenging time where we know the past will not come back, but we don't yet know the future. But one thing is clear. These days, education is no longer just about teaching students something, but about helping them develop a reliable compass and the tools to navigate with confidence through an increasingly volatile, complex, uncertain world. Success in education today is about identity, it's about agency, it's about purpose. It's about building curiosity, opening minds, it's about compassion, opening hearts. And it's about courage, mobilizing our cognitive, social and emotional resources to take action. And that's also going to be our best weapon against the biggest threats of our times. Ignorance, the closed mind, hate the closed heart and fear the enemy of agency. We live in this world in which the kind of things that are easy to teach and easy to test have also become easy to digitize, to automate. We know how to educate second-class robots, you know, people who are good at repeating what we tell them. Well, in the age of accelerations and artificial intelligence, we need to think much harder about what makes us first-class humans. This is about pairing the artificial intelligence of computers with the cognitive, social and emotional skills and values of human beings. Of course, you know, state-of-the-art knowledge will always remain important. But success in education is no longer mainly about reproducing educational content, where students in Romania are actually quite good at. No, it's about extrapolating from what we know and applying our knowledge creatively in novel situations. Deep understanding. Can you think like a scientist, a philosopher or a mathematician? It's becoming so much more important than simply knowing specific formulas, names of places. History is not primarily about remembering dates, names and places, but about being able to think like an historian. Can you understand how the narrative of a society has emerged, how it developed, how it advanced, and sometimes how it unravels when the context changes. The conventional approach to school is often to break big problems down into smaller bits and pieces and then to teach students how to solve those bits and pieces. Well, you know, modern societies create value by synthesizing different fields of knowledge, making connections between ideas that previously seemed unrelated. Connecting the dots where the next innovation, the next big idea will come from. And that requires to be familiar with and also to be receptive to knowledge in other people's fields. In today's school, students typically learn individually. And at the end of the school year, we certify their individual achievements. But the modern, interdependent world needs more great collaborators, great orchestrators. This pandemic has shown us how the well-being of people, and indeed nations, depends increasingly on our capacity to take collective action. Schools therefore need to become better at helping students think for themselves and to act for and with other people. And it's not just about cognitive skills. Social and emotional skills are equally important to help students live and work in a world in which most people need to appreciate a range of ideas, perspectives, values, and to collaborate with people of different cultural origins, often bridging space and time these days with technology. And a world in which their lives will always be affected by issues that transcend national boundaries. Effective communication and appropriate behavior in diverse teams have become so central to success in many jobs and will remain so as technology continues to make it easier for people to connect across the globe. Employers increasingly seek to attract learners who are able to apply and transfer their skills and knowledge to new contexts. And I know that features strongly in this year's Bucharest Summit. The bottom line is, if we want to stay ahead of our times, we have to find and refine the qualities that are unique to our humanity. And that complement, not compete with the capacities that we created in our computers. 
The challenge is that developing these cognitive, social and emotional capabilities requires a very different approach to learning and teaching and a very different caliber of educators. Where teaching is just about imparting prefabricated knowledge. You know, countries can afford low teacher quality and when teacher quality is low, governments tend to tell the teachers exactly what to do and exactly how they want it done. Using a very industrial organization of work. But that approach has broken down completely during the pandemic. In fact, the pandemic has shown us how important it is to make teaching a profession of advanced workers of knowledge who work with a high level of professional autonomy and at the very same time within a collaborative culture. But such people don't like to work as exchangeable widgets in schools organized as industrial workplaces. To track the people they need, modern school systems need to transform the type of work organization in their schools to one in which professional norms of collaboration replace bureaucratic and administrative forms of management. The past was about received wisdom. The future is about user-generated wisdom. The past was also divided, with teachers and content divided by subjects and students separated by expectations of their future career prospects. With schools designed to keep students inside and the rest of the world outside often with a lack of engagement with families and a reluctance to partner with other schools. Well, the future needs to be much more integrated, with an emphasis on the interrelation of subjects and on the integration of students. It also needs to be better connected so that learning is closely related to real-world contexts and contemporary issues and open to the rich resources in our communities. One of the things I learned is that effective learning environments are constantly creating synergies and constantly finding new ways to enhance professional, social and cultural capital with others. And they do that with families and communities, with higher education, with businesses and especially with other schools. This is about creating innovative partnerships. Isolation in a world of complex learning systems but seriously limit potential. The goal of the past was standardization and compliance. With students educated in age cohorts, all following the same standard curriculum, all assessed at the same time. The future is about building instruction from students' passions and capacities, helping students personalize their learning in, in ways that fosters its engagement and also talent. It's about encouraging students to be ingenious. In the past, schools were technological islands, with technology often supporting and conserving existing practice, rather than transforming it. Hence, students were always outpacing schools in their adoption and consumption of technology. Well, now schools need to use the potential of technologies to liberate learning from past conventions and to connect learners in new and powerful ways, with new sources of knowledge, with innovative applications, and with each other. During the pandemic, in fact, many schools in Romania have started this journey. The challenge is that such system transformation cannot just be mandated. You know, that always leads to surface compliance. But it also cannot be solely built from the ground up. Of course, government has a key role of platform and of broker, of stimulator, of enabler. It can focus resources, create a facilitative policy climate, use accountability and reporting to encourage new practice. But education needs to better identify key agents of change, to champion them, and to find more effective approaches to scale and disseminate innovations. We spend too much time pushing old ideas into schools and too little time to find the new ideas in classrooms and to scale and to spread them. To do whatever is possible to make it easier for innovators to take risks and encourage the emergence of new ideas. I know, it's all easy to say, hard to do. Knowledge about what works in education is only as good as our capacity to act on it. 
To transform education at scale, we need not just a radical vision of what is possible, but also powerful strategies that help make change happen. The road of educational reform is littered with many good ideas that were just poorly implemented. And the laws, regulations, the structures, institutions on which education leaders tend to focus, you know, they're just a small visible tip of a huge iceberg. The reason why it is so hard to move school systems is that there is a much larger invisible part under the waterline. And that invisible part is about the interests, the beliefs, the motivations, the fears of people, parents and teachers included. That is where the unexpected collisions occur, no? because this part of education reform tends to often evade the radar screen of public policy. No? And that is why education leaders are rarely successful with reform unless they build a shared understanding and collective ownership for change. And unless they build capacity and create the right climate with accountability measures designed to encourage innovation rather than just compliance. And last but not least, education needs not just to look forward, but also to look outward. The difference between education systems that are open to the world and ready to learn from others, and those that feel threatened by being exposed to alternative ways of thinking and working, is likely to be a key differentiator in the educational progress we're going to see in tomorrow's world. The world has become quite indifferent to tradition and past reputation, quite unforgiving to frailty and quite ignorant of custom and practice. No. Success will go to those individuals and nations which are swift to adapt, you know, slow to complain and always open to change. The Bucharest Summit is a great place to help education systems rise to this challenge and ensure that we educate the next generation for their future and not our past.